we are saying I do to another binge-worthy season of Married at First Sight. Okay, I do. <laughs> but what we really want to know is what's going on behind the scenes. One for the money, two for the show. Thinking of applying for the next season of Married at First Sight? Maybe make sure you have some savings to fall back on, just in case. Since stars give up eight weeks of their lives to get hitched to a total stranger, sight unseen is a lot to go through if all you get out of the experience is 15 minutes of fame. Turns out, the couples on Married at First Sight do make some money. Executive producer Chris Colin claims that they make next to nothing, revealing that they did not want people who were motivated by the wrong things. Okay, that's fair. But despite his claims, and depending on who you ask, it turns out the cast doesn't make anywhere near next to nothing. Production assistant who worked on the second season of the show shared on an online message board that the couples are actually paid $1,500 per episode. But Bob Boise, who worked as a business protection specialist before the show, said they got paid their wages as if they were doing their normal jobs. He said they sent over their pay slips to production. Although $1,500 isn't next to nothing, the cast revealed they had to cover their own living expenses. In addition to their salary, the couples are also given $150 per day as they navigate married life for eight weeks. Season 5 star Nassar Sultan said on Australian TV show Now to Love, that the couples had to pay for things like rent and groceries. He said his fiance Gabrielle would sometimes spend up to $70 a day on just living. So we didn't have much left after that. Can I get a receipt? Traditionally, the bride and her family are responsible for paying all wedding planning expenses. But when you're getting married to someone you don't know on a TV show, who pays for the wedding? There's some conflicting information out there, but Johnny Lem from season 13 of Married at First Sight in the US admitted that one of the reasons he agreed to do the show was that he knew his wedding would be paid for. Hopefully, another reason was love, but we'll let that one slide, Johnny. Former season 2 contestant Melissa said producers provide some money for wedding expenses, however, it is thought to be a small amount. Money was given to them for a wedding dress and a small budget for the suits, as well as for hen do and stag does. Before the 2018 series, it is believed that the show production team paid for more of the wedding items, such as the rings. Say yes to the dress. The married at first sight brides always look incredible on their wedding day, but Marilise revealed the wedding dress shopping experience was a nightmare. Instead of the typical fanfare one might be used to when shopping for a wedding dress, she said contestants were on their own. Marilise said the producers sent her money and told her that she had a week to get one. So instead of getting a group of her girlfriends together shopping while sipping mimosas, she spent most of her time calling around to local stores desperate for a dress. Most of the dress stores in her hometown were closed due to COVID, but she ultimately said yes to a dress in the end. Clark Sherwood participated in the UK version of Married at First Sight and revealed to Cosmopolitan UK that the show did pay for some wedding necessities. Since the name of the bridal boutique is mentioned in Married at First Sight, her dress was more than likely paid for by production or comped by the shop. Is this legal? All of us Married at First Sight fans want to know, are the marriages actually real? And the answer to that is you betcha. While it might be hard to believe, the weddings you see on TV are totally real, though past participants have said that they have to take multiple trips down the aisle and reenact the first kiss in order to get things right for TV. But each couple does get legally married. During an interview with The Wrap, executive producer Kowalin revealed how the producers juggle the legal paperwork required for a wedding while keeping the matches a secret. It turns out each person provides their individual information and the marriage license is signed after the ceremony takes place. So the marriages are, in fact, legally binding. I do want a prenup. Of course, no one enters into a legally binding marriage with a complete stranger without the proper protection. Married at first sight makes both the bride and groom sign a prenup. Chris Colin says the prenup is built to make sure that participants don't get into any legal trouble. It's a very short, brief prenup. It basically says what they walk into the marriage with is what they walk out of the marriage with, he says. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. The singles don't just get one matchmaker, they get a team of professionals trained in counseling and relationships. And the matchmaking team doesn't just vet their potential matches, they sift through every area of their lives with a fine-toothed comb. You're gonna get married. Oh my god, oh no! <laughs> From their finances to their political views, experts are able to dig up all the dirt, honey. Former contestant Melissa Sherwood told Cosmopolitan UK that she had to fill out a 500-question questionnaire that goes through your likes, dislikes, and everything in between. 
Through the experience, the relationship experts also help them to work through their fears and concerns as they navigate the unusual waters. Casting Call Casting for a show like this one is the key to its success, so it's no wonder it's an intense process. You can fill out an application the old-fashioned way and hope for a callback, but fun fact about that, the first season ended up with over 17,000 applicants, so you could be waiting for a while. Or you are headhunted by producers, and in order for them to find people who genuinely want to get married and will be a perfect match for someone else, the team has to scour the world, scouting out potential cast members. They look at dating websites and head out to bars, church groups, mixers, you name it, to land the ideal group of men and women. Scripted or not, that is the question. We love to watch random people meet for the first time at their wedding and try to work it out after. But it does have us questioning, is this real life or could it actually be scripted? It's been confirmed that Married at First Sight is not scripted. But it's not entirely truthful either. Even though the couples are not handed actual scripts, it doesn't mean that the producers aren't right there encouraging a storyline they wish to tell. Luke Dawson admitted that producers reminded them of the stories and would feed them a line or two every now and then. Intense filming schedules. While the experts try to match the participants through evaluations, there's no telling how people will act once they are put in front of a camera. Filming happens for over eight weeks, and contestants admit it can be intense. To make sure production captures everything, the couples must agree to being on camera anywhere from 12 to 16 hours every single day. Commitment ceremonies and dinner parties would sometimes take all day to film. And not only that, but there are times when the camera crew isn't around. And to make sure the drama never stops, producers give the couples individual cameras to record with when the other cameras aren't rolling. Do you have a hall pass? If the long hours weren't enough to drive someone mad, the contestants had to abide by strict guidelines. Stars of the UK version of the show had a strict curfew put in place by the production. In order to prevent couples from getting up to too much trouble while the camera crew isn't around, production forces couples to be home by 8 p.m. Melissa from season six said that the show even went as far as placing hall monitors to ensure no participants were sneaking out after curfew. The cast could not speak to other couples while in the apartments either. Some admit that COVID may have been a reason why production was so cautious during the last few seasons. 15-hour dinner parties The climax of each week typically were the explosive dinner parties filled with arguments, booze, and flirty interactions. Martha from season 6 opened up about the grueling hours and explained why those dinner parties were like a pressure cooker waiting to pop. She said the parties would sometimes go on for 15 hours and everyone is dressed and ready for it at 10 in the morning. She said production takes you to set and describes the area they were kept in as holding cells, separated and alone, stewing in their own thoughts for hours until dinner time. Couples aren't allowed to talk to each other and by the time they get to the dinner party, they are tired irritated, uncomfortable, and hungry. Mix that with alcohol and it's a recipe for disaster. BYOB Dinners During the first dinner party, Bob Boise admits as soon as a bottle of wine was finished, production would just replace it. But then they were all smashed and things would end up in massive arguments, which can be good for production but also hard to reel back in. So then by the second week, Boise said production took away a bit of the alcohol. Bob reveals that some of them started to bring their own booze to the party in their handbags. Social Media Managed Don't even think about updating your social media status while being a contestant on the show. On some of the show's international franchises, such as Married at First Sight Australia, production goes as far as confiscating contestants' phones. This was a new rule set in place after participants on the show in previous seasons were caught having an affair during filming. No one is allowed to post on social media before, during, or after the show. This is so what happens on the show can remain a secret. Are you really going to wear that? Season 5 cast member Nassar Sultan admitted they had to send pictures of their outfits to producers before dinner parties and commitment ceremonies to make sure they liked them or would work on camera. Not only that, but the bride and groom both submit their preferences for elements of the wedding like flowers, music, and food to the producers. But ultimately, it's the producers who then plan the wedding on their behalf. What if I don't? <laughs> After the wedding, the next steps are up to the couples to make it work. This can sometimes prove disastrous. So what if a couple doesn't work out and they want a divorce? If after the eight weeks of filming, the couple decides to get a divorce, the show will foot the bill of an attorney. Hey, it's the least they can do. 
But there's a catch. You have to get divorced within a time frame. The executive producer didn't share specifics around how long after the show wraps production would cover the cost of the attorney. And one thing is for sure, an annulment is not an option. These are legally binding marriages. Annulment is not an option. Pastor Calvin Robertson, one of the show's marriage counselors, told ET Online. The success rate of marriage is low as it is, so the chances of a couple from MAFS staying together in 2022 shows you miracles do happen. This is the most extreme way to try to find love. Martha Califaditis and Michael Brunelli. There was an instant connection between Michael and Martha, admitting he struck gold when he saw Martha walk down the aisle. I could totally see it working. Bright future. The honeymoon phase and fairy tale turned tumultuous as they questioned their ability to sustain a long distance relationship. Over time, Martha and Michael chose love over location. At the end of the day, Michael would move anywhere for Martha. No matter what happened in this lifetime, we were going to meet and be together, Martha professed. Currently, they're going strong as a couple and are very active with Instagram photos displaying their beautiful selves and marriage. Michael promised that he would move to Sydney and made the move in 2020. After this big decision, Michael transitioned his career as a fitness instructor and quit his job as a primary school teacher. Martha continues to build her career as an Instagram influencer with over 600,000 followers and growing. Martha and Michael announced their engagement in December 2021 and intend to wed in 2022. Amani Alia and Woody Randall Amani and Woody were credited to be the best paired out of season 11. With a spark and immediate chemistry once they met, they actually knew each other growing up. This allowed them to bond over their upbringing, culture, and mutual friends. This couple took advantage of the process the right way. Always open and communicative, with each other, they remained committed to their relationship. Viewers loved watching their genuine and authentic connection, yet were realistic with inevitable tiffs and arguments they could always talk out. I can totally talk to you about it. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. They had to quarantine together when COVID-19 hit, bringing them closer as a couple. Recently, they celebrated their second wedding anniversary, along with expecting a baby in June. Aaliyah confessed to People magazine, We're so blessed to be able to embark on this journey of parenthood as we celebrate our second anniversary together. Katina and Olajuwon Being nervous on your wedding day, having cold feet, and feeling overwhelmed happens to the best of us. But Katina could barely focus on anything when she was about to marry Olajuwon. And I'm looking forward to starting this journey with you. The worst thing that could happen is us not get along, not being on the same page, she confessed. Terrified, she said, I do. His expectations for her to cook and clean cause tension, but at the same time, they're able to connect on a level that goes deeper than initially expected. K and O are believed to give their marriage a real shot. The reason people think it could work is because they feel very comfortable together, overcoming issues while sharing great chemistry together. Aaron Bateman and Bryce Mower Married since 2016, Bryce and Aaron went off without a hitch. What she loves about him is the fact that he is the same person as the first day she met him six years ago. They have kept a lower profile. Since the show, they prefer to keep the relationship more private. He stated, I'm sure it infuriates a lot of people that they're not kept in the loop because the nature of reality TV is you then go on to flaunt your whole life on social media. I don't think it's normal. Anthony D'Amico and Ashley Peta. Married since 2017, couple Ashley and Anthony hit it off the day they met, feeling as though they have known each other their whole life. Before meeting Anthony, she admitted she didn't see the social media experiment working out. The chances of this working are near impossible. I took a leap of faith. I could never imagine it turned out like it did. Once the initial excitement of being newlyweds faded, their first disagreement started when she didn't want to take his last name. To me, it's like a feminist thing. Like, why don't, how about you take my last name? She felt nervous towards his traditional ways and he felt un certain towards her liberal approach. Being able to overcome these opposing ideals, they continue to build a strong foundation as a couple. Their bond continues by sharing deep love for their daughters, stating, we never knew we could love someone so much. Elizabeth Bice and Jamie Thompson Couple Elizabeth and Jamie have been married since 2019. Known for their fights, many fans didn't think they would last. I'm so sick of this! But in the end, the chemistry was so strong. Regardless if it was making up or breaking up, it was passionate throughout. They both bonded over fashion, self-care face masks, and not wanting children of any kind in their radius. Elizabeth just wanted to be loved for who she was, and Jamie provided that for her. On their second wedding anniversary, Elizabeth posted, 
In a world full of uncertainties, you are my certainty, and I thank you for being my rock and my best friend every single day. Currently, they live together in Santa Barbara and are actually planning to have children together one day. AJ and Stephanie. AJ loved what he saw from Stephanie's dress, her hair and her walk down the aisle towards him stating, I already could tell that we were connected. Once they got comfortable with each other, AJ displayed his off-putting behavior. Stephanie noticed how the smallest things would set AJ off, especially when he's hungry. People felt like AJ brought bad vibes and complained all the time. Short and snippy, she was worried about his mood swings, even embarrassed. He admits that he has issues controlling himself. She felt uncomfortable with his unpredictability. Stephanie was very stable. She put effort into bringing positive energy into the relationship, into the room, and everywhere she went. As a success story, AJ and Stephanie have been on spin-offs for MAF to maintain a successful marriage. AJ and Stephanie credit their counselor to help mediate marital issues. They bonded over their time together when they recently tested positive for COVID-19. AJ sure made quarantining with Stephanie fun and creative such as putting inflatable pools inside their home. Johnny and Carrie, going strong since the first day they met, considered the most successful couple of the Australian franchise, their love is undeniable. They both had the same traditional values, wanting a family, always imagining children. Johnny, there's never been a dull moment with you. Starting off as a social experiment, this was a true example of love at first sight. The couple admits the show put a lot of pressure on them, but despite this, the good outweighed the bad, and overall, being brought together was worth every aspect of their journey. Johnny and Carrie are together and still going strong in 2022. Olivia Fraser and Jackson Loney Olivia and Jackson started off strong, sharing similar morals and values. They both were 100% committed to making their marriage work, accepting each other's baggage prior to knowing each other. Yet, ironically, the first strain in their relationship had nothing to do with each other, rather Olivia's toxic association with fellow bride and cast member Dominica. Olivia and Dominica's drama caused a rift between the newlyweds. Jackson admitted that the social experiment exposed parts of Olivia that made him question everything about her and, most importantly, their marriage together. I'm not gonna keep kissing ass and apologizing. You can kiss everyone else's ass, but you don't have to kiss mine, I'll tell you right now. Over time, Jackson fell deeply in love with Olivia, putting effort into her feeling special. I will love you with my whole heart. I'm excited to see what the rest of our lives have in store for us. The couple still show up to MAFS reunions together. Olivia loved how different Jackson was compared to her past relationships. I get to be with Jackson, who is outrageously proud to be my husband on national television. It was the most loved I've ever felt by men in my entire life. Currently, the couple are excited to put forward a new chapter together. Recently moved in together and with baby fever, they look forward to starting their family sooner than later. Brianna and Vincent Known for their public display of affection, season 12's couple Vincent and Brianna are still together since meeting at the altar and more in love than ever. Vincent knew how to make Brianna feel special. He was sensitive and romantic. However, his sensitivity made it difficult for her at times. He often bottled up his emotions and shut down. Brianna had a hard time scoping him, and their communication issues took a hit when her smart mouth brought out Vincent's passive aggression, shutting her out entirely. Over time, Brianna put effort towards working on her tone and delivery, and Vincent learned how to be transparent with her. With help from relationship experts, they both learned how to balance working on their individual selves and how to respect each other's differences. Danielle Bergman and Bobby Dodd Danielle finally got her southern gentleman. Bobby was delighted to call Danielle his wife. Their genuine curiosity to know more about one another and talking about everything under the sun was refreshing to see. Bobby was traditional, but Danielle made it clear that her career was very important to her. And so whatever it is that you want to do, your goals, I want to help you meet those goals and expressed her dismay at the thought of staying with her kids every day. Bobby reconsidered his initial idea on how he imagined his wife should be, clarifying he did not want to push a 1950s marital construct on her. Danielle really respected his ability toward rewiring his traditional expectations. They had issues when it came to her impulsive spending habits, along with her $15,000 credit debt. Still, Bobby was adamant on accepting her in spite of his frugal mentality. She was much more spontaneous than him, but he actually appreciated how free-spirited she was. It was refreshing to him. She would foster puppies without telling him, leave him to be the one to clean up, but he knew that a happy wife is a happy life. 
Smart guy. His ability to evolve and change his viewpoint for the sake of accepting her is a huge reason as to why they worked out. Now, they share two children, and ironically, Danielle discovered her love for staying at home while Bobby is the breadwinner for the family. Deanna and Greg Marrying on season 9 of MAFS, a couple Deanna and Greg shared a special chemistry within their similar upbringings and faith-based values, starting off with a strong foundation already built. Dealing with heartbreak he didn't cause, Deanna was single for 10 years prior to marrying Greg, bouncing from man to man with many toxic situationships. A hard adjustment for her, understandably, but it was almost like pulling teeth for Greg when he tried to get her to open up. Yet, he understood that time would eventually let her guard down. Greg's desire for romance and vulnerability seemed to freak her out. Perhaps she wasn't used to a man who wanted to know her inside and out, overwhelmed with her drastic life change from single to married. Greg understood this about her. His love for her was beyond his selfish desires. They have been together for over three years, sharing a son together. Jules Robinson and Cam Merchant Together for three years, couple Jules and Cam felt as though time stopped when they met at the altar. Their love was undeniable with dreams of a big family. They were able to open up and confide within each other, easily bonding from the start. Yeah, I'm mad about Cam. Cam would end up so emotionally invested in her pain, he would forget to consider himself. He is such a big heart, he's the most caring person I've ever met in my life. Another success story, they are the only couple to have stayed married from their season, sharing a child together. Today, they feel the same magic that they did on their wedding day, but with more comfort and understanding with each other on another level since their wedding in 2019. In 2022, they plan to try for another baby. Jessica and Austin Couple Jessica and Austin married during season 10 and have stayed strong for over two years. Their zest for life allowed them to not take themselves too seriously. They said the secret to their successful marriage is being yourself and having fun, but they take their commitment seriously by putting effort into good interactions for positive memories. This allowed their evolution in their dynamic to be a beautiful experience, promising that they would be with each other through thick and thin, accepting each other's quirks as perfect imperfections. Always excited about their future together, they recently welcomed a baby boy. Jamie and Doug Married since 2014, couple Jamie and Doug are the best success story of the franchise. I'm Doug. Oh, I'm Jamie. <sighs> but they have had their fair shares of ups and downs in their marriage. Experiencing issues couples often do with intimacy, mental health, and trust. They are not ashamed to be an open book within their hurdles. Jamie experienced multiple miscarriages, but eventually gave birth. She opened up about her insecurities after having a child, saying, I don't feel sexy, I don't feel hot, I'm anxious, and I'm insecure. They were honest about their marriage being close to divorce due to her trust issues with him, accusing him of cheating, yet they refused to give up on each other. They gave credit to their therapist, helping them mediate their communication issues. Eventually, they decided to fight for their marriage rather than each other by putting effort into what initially had them fall in love in the first place. Always still working through their marital issues, now they live in Florida and plan to grow their family, currently sharing a daughter and a son. Just because it wasn't on air doesn't mean it didn't happen, and that's exactly what we are going to get to the bottom of with the reality hit Married at First Sight, Alyssa's off-camera move after their wedding. US season 14 participant Chris was a guest on Married at First Sight after party on February 9. He revealed some seriously awkward moments from the reality series, including what Alyssa did off camera after their wedding. He said Alyssa immediately got on the phone with the lawyer as soon as they said their I do's. But even before then, she was already acting shady. He said when they went to City Hall to sign their marriage license, Alyssa was already hesitant. First, she declined to share her phone number with him. Then the officiant asked them if they wanted to be married. Chris said yes, and Alyssa sat in silence. She would not say, I do, out loud. I said yes. She sat in silence, and she said nothing. Apparently, even though Alyssa's actions made it clear she had no interest in a relationship with the man the experts had matched her with, the experts just didn't do this right. She wouldn't tell him she was officially done. Instead, she insisted she wanted to stay on the show for the experience of living in the same apartment building as the other couples, even though she also refused to share a living space with Chris. He said she wouldn't sit next to him on the plane and made a producer sit between them. 
slipping into the DMs. It's safe to say things didn't work out between Chris and Alyssa, but apparently the drama didn't end when their relationship did. During an appearance on Married at First Sight after Party's March 9th episode, fellow Boston bride Lindsay shocked everyone when she revealed that her husband Mark and Alyssa were messaging each other following her exit from the series. However, she didn't say who reached out to who first. Cue the eye roll now because Lindsay said Mark told her he was just checking in on Alyssa. Mark told Lindsay that he wants to be nice to everyone and that he wants everyone to like me. Even though Lindsay says they weren't even friends with her to begin with, the whole thing seems a little sketchy and would have been great if that storyline had been touched on a little bit more by production so viewers would have a better idea of what was really going on between the two. Domenica Calarco's Brawl For this next one, we are heading down under to talk about Australia's infamous cast member, Domenica Calarco. It was revealed that bosses of the E4 reality series cut some of Domenica Calarico's meanest scenes. Season 9 delivered a fiery dinner party which descended into chaos after three ladies got into a shouting match. We saw Domenica smash a glass after fellow bride Olivia Frazier told her she should change her voice. I'm sick of your voice yelling! But surprisingly, that wasn't the worst of it. A number of sources close to the show claim producers cut many moments from that dinner party to soften her behavior so she didn't look half as nasty. The source claimed she was a big bully and thrived off belittling her co-stars. The source said that producers saw Domenica was becoming a fan favorite so they didn't want to paint her as the villain, and instead made Olivia out to be the villain. Another insider added Dom was the producer's pet. Domenica and Andrew's secret relationship Apparently, Domenica's mean moments weren't the only things that were cut from the Australian franchise of the series. A juicy Domenica and Andrew storyline was reportedly cut from the MAFS, an anonymous contestant informed the Daily Mail Australia that Domenica had a little old crush on Andrew and even discussed it on camera, but it never made it to the final cut of the show. For some reason, the explosive storyline was cut by producers and didn't make it to TV. Was season 9 just too spicy already? At a secret party held by Olivia Frazier and Jackson Loney at their apartment during the filming, Domenica allegedly told several of her castmates that she had a thing for Andrew and found him attractive. Olivia then reportedly brought up Domenica's comments about Andrew on camera, but all of that was edited out. Poppy Jennings' Exit Another Australian contestant, Poppy, had a pretty inconsistent storyline that we can't help but attribute to the things we didn't see on camera. It just didn't add up. The series positioned her and new husband Luke as an ideal match, yet we rarely saw them interact. Instead, we incessantly heard her complain about missing her kids on almost every episode. I'm not, I'm not over the fact that I've left my kids to do this. We were shown Poppy upset with Luke, but it was never explained why. Then suddenly, overnight, everything changed. Poppy left the experiment and production had to notify Luke that his time on the show was over. Following her exit, Poppy spoke out about her decision to leave and said the real reason she left was due to the fact that she didn't see a future with Luke. She revealed to Daily Mail Australia that they'd had a tense first night together, prompting Luke to move into another apartment to give Poppy space. Their tense night didn't make it to the final cut of the show, leaving viewers in the dark about why Poppy just up and left and instead edited it to make it look like she left because she missed her kids. Being away from my kids has been the hardest thing for me and I didn't realise that. Whether we will ever hear the true sequence of events seems unlikely, but Poppy is reportedly seeking legal action against the network. Carly Boyer Narrative Poppy Jennings wasn't the only contestant claiming to be given poor editing. Carly Boyer hosts a dating advice podcast, Finding a Unicorn, and was a contestant on the 2018 season. On her podcast, she made allegations that network producers and editors manipulated footage to change her narrative. She said for her what was actually shown on TV was that she left because Justin was just being non committal and not opening up to her. I had to pretend that was why I was leaving but I actually left for a different reason and I've never been able to speak about that and basically had a gag order that I wasn't allowed to speak. Carly said what actually prompted her to exit and it's pretty wild. It was a night where everyone was having parties in the rooms and Justin was downstairs in another couple's room. She said she walked into the room and Justin was in there with another woman without any clothes on. From that moment on, Carly says the producers told her she couldn't talk about it at all because it wouldn't make sense for her storyline. Boring Blair and Sean Another 2018 contestant who has less than positive feelings towards his experience on the show and how he was portrayed is Sean Thompson. He was paired with Blair Rachel during his season and the couple were quickly labeled boring. From what we saw, they parted ways after Sean voted leave and then they exited the experiment. It's a really tough call. 
so I said to leave. However, Sean said that isn't actually what happened. He said the producers told him they want him off the show. He said production told him to write leave because they weren't going to use anything anyways. Chris and Vanessa's exit. Married at First Sight Australia's production team seems to be the biggest culprits when it comes to manipulating or completely omitting footage because 2020 contestants Chris and Vanessa are singing the same tune. Chris says they were forced off the show and producers told him they weren't able to shoot anything more with them because Vanessa threatened the network and made up stuff about her mental health. But Vanessa is telling a much different story, saying on a radio show that there was an incident not caught on camera that caused her to ask to leave the experiment. According to Vanessa, the night of the lunch, Chris went out with his family and partied and drank, and when he came home, he was abusive to her to the point where she hid in the bathroom from him, none of which was portrayed to viewers at all. Sarah and Telv not so fairy tale romance. Okay, we have one more Australian couple to talk about, and then we'll move on to the UK franchise, we promise. Sarah was matched with Telv Williams, and the two are quickly painted as the season's sweethearts. Sarah says that away from the camera, their picture perfect relationship was a totally different story. She said she could throw a dart on the street and it could land on a random person and it would be a better match than Telv. She said out of the many hours they filmed of the couple, they had to have only shown 0.1% and then it was stitched together because behind the scenes they were a totally different couple than what people saw on TV. Sarah said they actually tried to leave the show on several occasions, bags packed and everything, but production wouldn't let them and their problems were never shown to viewers. Alexis Economou Dating History As promised, we are moving on to the UK. Alexis Economou accused the show of cutting scenes of her talking about her dating history. She said that she revealed that she is bisexual and spoke openly about her past relationships with women on the show, but the conversation never made it to the final edit. Meghan and Bob's Missing Scenes Married at First Sight UK star Meghan revealed that there's a lot that viewers don't get to see, including relationship breakdowns and even the progressions that happen. Meghan and her match Bob were whisked away Way to the Dominican Republic for their romantic getaway, where production would film them for nearly 12 hours a day. That's an insane amount of footage if you think about it. Megan said so much was edited from their trip that viewers saw quote hardly anything from what actually happened. Bob revealed the same thing after the show. He made the heartbreaking decision to leave Megan, but said that there were lots of unaired moments during his honeymoon with Megan and that it would have given fans a different opinion of the relationship. He said there was a helicopter ride from their honeymoon that was never shown. The couple also had a romantic meal on their last night when the two spoke openly about things and about where things were headed. Nightmare Wedding Day Carly Boyer opened up about how much from the actual wedding days aren't shown to viewers. What we see are these picture-perfect romantic weddings, despite it being two strangers from the outside looking in. They look like well-put-together weddings, right? Wrong. What production doesn't show us is what the guests and bridal party are put through behind the scenes. Carly says that her guests were left on the boat where the ceremony was going to take place for six hours without food and only alcohol. She said before the ceremony, she and her bridesmaids got locked in a windowless room with no air and one of her bridesmaids actually fainted. She said they called production for help, but no one would do anything. But of course, production doesn't have any of those scenes on camera because it would ruin the fairy tale illusion. What is a moment you wish we saw on camera? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons to keep up to date with the thing's reality.